Hi again, everyone, and welcome in to CBT. I'm James Rapine of AllBengals.com. Hit that subscribe button, ring the bell. The trade deadline, well, it's just 12 days away. So if you're looking for trade deadline coverage, we have you covered. Check out our latest video. And well, I'm really excited to be joined by Ted Karras. That interview coming your way in just a second. But Ted will be at the 16 Lots Southern Outpost in Newport, Kentucky on Monday from 5 to 8 to release... It's a special release party for beanie season. That's right. Beanies, beanies, get your Cincy hat beanies. Boom. Ted's going to have them hit there. The entire Cincy hat team is going to be there. I'm hoping to make it. We'll see if I can make that work. But you can drink some incredible beer at 16 Lots. You can have your picture taken with Ted Karras, get some Teddy autographs, and get your beanie for beanie season all going all the proceeds going to the village of Marici. You can also get yours uh, about a week from now. I believe they're going to be released on October 26th at the hat.com, but always get your gear from the Cincy hat. And without further ado, let's get to my one-on-one -on -one conversation with Bengals center, Ted Karras. Ted, I, I promise we won't spend much time on, on last week, but the end of that game where the defense gets back to back, essentially goal line stands inside the 10, and, and ends the game, wins the game. What's going through your mind on the sideline besides please, please get a stop? Because I'm sure you'd much rather be on the field and be in control at least a bit. And, and obviously the offense wasn't. You know, well, I was thinking it's really going to be a bummer if we end up losing this game, um, you know, going into a bye week because we had opportunities to close it and clinch it. Um, and kudos to our defense, kudos to our D-line. Um, you know, Trey Henderson led by Trey, but Sam, Cam Sample, DJ Reader, BJ, I mean, backs against the wall multiple times in that fourth quarter and, you know, took the game to their own hands, collapsed the pocket and ended it, uh, called game. So, um, what, you know, one of the things that, you know, we have a great defense, but one of the things we need to get better at is just situational football. Um, you know, I think we're doing doing some of the right things on offense, but we need to be able to execute a situation of, you know, four minute and just kind of cinch, put these games on ice and not make it so stressful. I mean, that was a stressful game. That has a lot of implications between two and four and three and three in the bye week. And it was got to have it situations and we didn't quite get it done on our end. So kudos to the D, um, you know, save the week, save the week off, um, really put us in a position now where the AFC North is one game for everyone apart. It's really going to come down to these last 11, 12 games and weeks um, is right where we want to be after how we started. So, you know, feeling good going into the bye, but there's definitely some things on offense we need to we need to cinch up so we can put, you know, we, we started strong, we need to start strong and then put these games on ice and then go to the next week. What's it like going against DJ Reader or BJ or or Sam or, or Trey? You've you've dealt with all of them in practice, and obviously, as you mentioned, they came up big the other day. You know, for me, I probably go against DJ the most, just based on yeah. you know what, how our how our two stabs scheme up each other uh, in camp. But what an advantage that is for me to have a month of, you know, not no pressure, but lower pressure situations and practice against a guy that's. You know, at the top of, you know, the top, he's a top three of his position in the league. And I know I, I'm sure Orlando feels the same way about Trey. And then we just have, we have so many great talents over there. We got Logan, GP. I mean, the guys they roll in, Cam Sample, Joseph Asai. I mean, Sam Hubbard's our captain and it always just a phenomenally solid player. So it's it's an advantage for us and you know it's always nice to see them go out and, and take it out on a, on a different o line after having to having to deal with them for 6 weeks in camp but um you know they're playing great and Lou's got them going exactly you know how he does so the onus is on us as the offensive unit to to match that so we can start you know winning these games by 2 3 possessions and not having it come down to two 10 yard uh 10 yard line stands after the game, Joe Burrow talked for, I don't know, roughly four minutes. And I've told this story. I didn't mention you, but but I'm going to now since yeah. since you're here. And then we go in the locker room and we're doing interviews. And I, I think I just finished interviewing Sam just based on my locker room placement. Or I was about to go up to Sam to talk about the end of the game. And, and you dap up Joe Burrow at his locker. 
and obviously you guys won the game. It's much better than losing the game. Huh. And he says we need to be better about three times, which is ex basically what he ended every sentence with in the news conference. What was he like? How is he? How does he kind of set the tone? I know he doesn't say a lot, no. but it it just kind of felt like he was about as unhappy as I've seen him after a win on Sunday. But it could be a good thing going into the bye with, I don't even want to say motivation, but <laughs> just from from that fact, that experience going into the bye, knowing that you have to improve. Yeah, I mean, I, I did like what he said too. You know, I'm never going to apologize for a win. I, I wholeheartedly yeah. agree with that because I you have to winning football games is very hard in this league. Um, you know, I had my cousins over that that night. I had a bunch of family in for that night, and one of my little cousins was, you know, exclaiming, "Why aren't the uh, Why aren't the Eagles blowing out the Jets?" And I was like, well, this is the NFL, son. I mean, that just doesn't happen. You have to be on your game ready to go, you know, 100% of the time. But, to, you know, to answer your question, yeah, I mean, there's some dissatisfying things about that that victory, especially on the offensive side of the ball. We do need to be better, and we need to be better situationally. I thought we came out great. You know, yeah. we came out, went right down the field. We answered their first score, which is, you know, very, very critical uh, in an NFL game to answer if, if a team scores on opening drive to go down and answer um, not only for morale, but just for a possession uh, and game plan standpoint. But, you know, we do need to be better in, in some of these situations. And, you know, that's what we're going to be looking forward to. You know, we get a little break. You know, luckily we escaped that one with the win three and three going into the bye. Um, I don't think anyone on offense, you know, this first six weeks of the season is going to sit here and tell you that they love the way they're playing. You know, I think, you know, maybe Kappa. Kappa's playing out of his mind. He's doing a great job. He's playing for very well. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of things. Everyone everyone has their own things that we're going to go, you know, take this week, get away from it, but come back, you know, and we have to have some, some improvements. Like, you know, for instance, for myself, you know, I want to calm my hands down, get my hands inside hand placement, and just kind of own my set a little bit more. I did a, you know, I've watched a couple of our, previous games just a few of these nights and I'm just looking for you know little improvements that can you know take away some of the negative plays that we had not that we it hasn't been horrendous but mm -hmm. we have to have you know as we go into this schedule our schedule is tough and as we go into you know November December January football um, you know we're going to need to be at our very best so everyone's going to take stock of themselves get away for a week and come back and I hope you know at least for what I'm doing is having two or three things that is my emphasis going into the second two thirds of this season. So most notably my hands and uh, just owning my set a little bit more when, when I'm uncovered. I want to get into the second half of the season and really focus, shift our focus to that. But before that, I want to discuss Monday and obviously Ted joining us on behalf of the Cincy hat.com. You can follow on Twitter at Cincy hat or on Instagram and Facebook yeah. as well, but you'll be at 16 lots from five to eight, they're Southern Outpost in Newport. So really close to downtown for those that are looking for maybe a happy hour destination, but it's the beanie release party on Monday from five to eight. Uh, I know you're excited. I know Matt's excited. I know the entire Cincy Hat team is excited about this. It's beanie season. You know, you can feel it in the <laughs> air this morning. It's a beanie type of morning. And um, we're so grateful for the support. I mean, we haven't even closed in on one calendar year of the Cincy hat being for sale. So, um, you know, we're excited to launch this new line of beanies. I know a lot of people have been asking for it and we're going to be there at, at 16 lots from five to eight, hanging out, you know, signing, uh, anything. Um, we got a couple, we got a great local artist. Hollis has some really cool stuff, mm, yeah. um, that he's releasing to help the Cincy hat. So, um, you know, it's going to be a great time. It's so great that we get to come off a of bye three and three with the whole, you know, everything we want ahead of us. And we, uh, I'm really excited to just, you know, talk to some of the fans, the Cincy nation, you know, they come out always and, um, you know, really looking forward to seeing you all there. Again, you could get details, uh, at Cincy hat on Twitter or X, I guess is, is how everybody's calling it and now, even though it's still, it's still Twitter and it's going to be Twitter, um, Facebook, Instagram as well, or you can just check out the Cincy hat.com. All right. Uh, in beanies, by the way, will be released officially. I think next week around Thursday 
is yep. was what it sounds like tentatively. Yeah. So the so. Just, these, are, these are the first available, and we're going to come, and these are you know we'll have plenty of inventory too for for those who can't make it as well. So we'll be we'll be selling beanies. Hope to see a lot in Paycor. Uh, you know, for this for this uh, last two thirds of the season. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And let's dive into the last two thirds. It's weird because last year it was right in the middle. The buy was right in the middle, and you could say first half, second half. We're not at the the midway point. And yet just looking, and I get it, every team deals with adversity, but just looking at the first six games and really the past three months now, and I wrote this this week, is like from a Joe Burrow standpoint, he's on the shelf for five weeks. I know that probably stunk like mentally for him as much as anything. And he's been battling the calf since aggravating it and playing through it. Like this week is probably good. It probably comes at the right time. (laughs) How important do you think it is to have a bye week now versus in a few weeks where you guys can reset mentally and physically at three and three and say, all right, we're a game out. We can make our push still and not have to, to continue to grind almost to, to get to the bye. Because I think the bye was a key point the moment that that Joe, for example, retweaked his calf in, in week two. I agree. And based on how we started as well, to get back to even, and you know, in week six was huge. And, you know, probably a little bit early if I was going to, you know, uh, for my taste as far as wh- where, sure. where I would put the bye. But, you know, we have a Thursday game coming up too, and that acts like, a you know, another little rest period for a weekend. So, you know, the way this is all, all playing out, um, you know, we're definitely going to do everything we can to, to use it to our advantage. I know a bye week is so important, just, just getting away, not only physically, but mentally and emotionally. There's, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, go into the competitive stamina of an NFL football player. And, um, you know, one of the big ones is just the emotional impact that a football game has, you know, not only you're getting graded, you know, by your coaches, your organization. Now there's grading agencies. There's so much in on the news and Twitter of how you played and you got conflicting reports. There's a lot of guys, you know, that, that can take a toll on, on young athletes. So get away from the game, watch everyone else on the hot seat, you know, come up with your two or three things that you're going to focus on ready to roll and, and implement them so that we can, you know, have our best success moving forward because we have some big games coming up and it's really going to be exciting football uh, for Cincinnati yet again. The next month, your next four, at San Fran, home for Buffalo on Sunday night football. A, then you host a, a good Houston team that I think has been better than people realize. And then it's that Thursday game uh, against Baltimore. I mean, it, it it's eerily similar to last year where you look at the schedule and you're like, there's no real easy game. And I know there's no easy game in the NFL anyways, but there's no like obvious, oh, well, they'll roll over them. Not that you won't win all four. Maybe you will. But it's it's going to be challenging. There's no doubt. It is, and the plan is to win all four. Um, you know, obviously, we know we're talented enough uh, and got the guys to go in and win any football game. But yeah, we're coming off a bye, going right to San Fran. Then we got our old AFC counterparts, the Bills, uh, coming into town, which is nice though. It's always easier than going to Buffalo. Um, Texas have been playing great, and then we got to get a division win um, when we go to Baltimore because. Uh, you know, actually, we that's interesting. We don't play a lot of division teams, and then we kind of got a that month of November, yep. December. That's that's the bulk of our division games right there. So, um, yep. You know, this is a high stakes league, and we're we're you know, we didn't start how we wanted to, but really, we're right in the mix. And I always joke, I joke with my teammates. You know, when we were doing that, I was like, oh, we got everyone right where we want them, and <laughs> we we do. And we have everything in front of us. Uh, we can still control our, our, our own destiny. And that's why, you know, when we get back, um, I'm sure everyone's going to come back with the, with the ferocity, uh, ready to go, ready to work, do whatever we can, you know, to be successful. Nine of your final 10 games are against AFC opponents. Right now you guys don't have an AFC win, which is, is yeah. weird. You dominated the NFC West. We'll see if that can continue uh, against San Fran. But it, it's wild. Like when you think of – tiebreakers and playoff positioning. I know I'm just getting ahead of myself and you, you guys aren't thinking about that, but there's a bunch of AFC games, not just AFC North, but you do have uh, the the Steelers back uh, twice in a month. You have the the Colts and the Jags in between there. So there's a lot of AFC opponents as well. Um, that, that stood out to me. I didn't realize it on schedule release day, how many how many of the NFC West opponents were, were early in the season. 
I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't even think about that either. And so that's why when, when you see those graphics on Twitter and where, where the seeding already, you know, week, week seven seeding <laughs> that means so much in this league. Um, but it's just interesting. Yeah. Excuse the, excuse the race, but you know, we have all these games are going to be huge and it's, it's, I think that's what makes the NFL so compelling too and so popular is how, you know, every one of these games has just huge ramifications as to far as to, you know, playoff berths, success of the season, even just making it into the dance. I think, you know, I think the, the AFC is a little bit interesting this year. There's not, I'd say probably the Dolphins are at the top and then the Chiefs, but Really, you know, it's pretty even throughout you know, a lot of parody, and it's really going to be about just, you know, getting your ticket into the dance and, you know, and being ready to go in January to, you know, to win some big games. And we have to win as many games as possible leading up to that. But I think when you look at the the macro version of the AFC playoff picture, um, it's going to be tight. I mean, it's going to be division winners, and it's going to be a lot of tight, tight, uh, you know, wild card implications and that's why these games you only get 17 games and you know uh we, we didn't start the first six really the first two that we wanted and, and got back on track here but um you know it's going to be tight going down uh, in this this stretch as far as um i'm trying to think if i have any other no i i think that's it uh, any other season stuff for you i, I really don't um but i, I do wonder this because my first reaction was, oh, I'm about to get a gold medal. And, and uh, I'm sure you saw the news. 2028 Olympics are going to have flag football. Are, are you going to go try out and be uh, an Olympian? Because I could totally see it. Oh, uh, I think in 20, yeah, 2028, I'll probably be a lot leaner. Um, you know, what is that? Five years from now. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, I think that's pretty cool. I, you know, I saw that article too this morning that there's a player appetite for it. Um, I want, yeah, I wonder how that's going to work out and the rules of that. I think it's pretty cool though. And it definitely is going to bolster, you know, youth, um, enrollment. I think there's been a lot of people that, you know, kind of hold their kids back from playing, but flag football offer offers a, a youth enrollment boost. That's a little bit less risky than putting the pads on as an eight year old. So I, I, I love what people have been doing with flag football. So. I'll definitely be watching. Where are the 28 Olympics, by the way? Oh, do you know? See, I don't, but I'll I'll look it up right now. Los Angeles. So there you go. I'm definitely in. I'm gonna try out. You're in. Yeah. No. I mean, you got a shot. I would love to be some sort of ambassador for, uh, <laughs> you know, for for the game for for maybe maybe my role could be recruiting other nations to you know have their best. At uh, at these positions, it's gonna be tough for people to come in and, without the context of playing football their whole life, to come in and, and cover Jamar Chase in, in a in a flag football scenario. I I saw that. I saw I saw someone tweet that. Like, uh, I I'd love to see the accountant from wherever or whatever it was try to guard Jamar Chase, and it's like, yeah, well, I I, I do wonder if Jamar would play. I I, I would. Uh, I would be interested to see how many NFL players would play. I think there will be a lot because how else a lot, do you get a, I think a lot would play. And I think a cool thing gold about medal. it too is we would also, if there was a women's aspect of it, it'd be, we'd have professional, you know, women football players, um, you know, representing yeah. the country. I think that would just boost enrollment all around, you know, being involved in football. So I think it's really cool. Um, the Olympic committee has their work cut out for them though, trying to figure out, you know, what's the, what's the appetite for other countries to want to do that? So, um, I think it will probably be pretty big though, but, uh, America is definitely the favorite going forward yeah, by far, by far. I don't even know. <laughs> I, I mean, m maybe you have an all time quarterback to make it semi fair, but you know, I mean, think about it. Just quarterback play alone would be much, much different. Um, last thing, what are you doing Sunday? Uh, it's an off day. You're going to uh, be well, watching football red I mean, zone. You know, you know, I like red zone, but I'd rather just watch a full game and just kind of flip back and forth, um, you know, just depending on who's playing. I haven't even looked at the slate yet. I'll be watching the game tonight. Um, Saturday, I'm driving to Indianapolis, Marion University, uh, plays St. Francis uh, University. So 
going to go check on the guys. I've been, uh, you know, trying to help out that in my father's program any way they can. It's going to be a big matchup. This is a traveling trophy game for the Franciscan Bowl trophy. Um, these two schools have been playing uh, for a long time against each other. It's actually, it's where my dad coached last year, St. Francis of Fort Wayne, Indiana. And it's also linebacker coach James Betcher's alma mater. So uh, they were oh. all feeling good uh, Monday. Offense wasn't so much, so we didn't. I didn't uh, quite get a chance to uh, set up some kind of arrangement of maybe some push-ups or uh, he can wear a Marion hat around the building after we beat the Cougars uh, this Saturday. Oh, but you got to shoot him a text. You got. Oh to yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll set home. something up. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a great time. I'm really excited to go. I haven't been back. You know. To, to Marion since 2012, since the last time my, oh, wow. you know, my dad was there for a game. You know, I've been back, you know, yeah. just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's grown. It's really cool campus. We have a lot of Cincinnati guys. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably be popping my head into some Cincinnati high schools, you know, giving some Marion hats out just because, uh, you know, it's, it's two hours away from here, championship level football. And there's a lot of, there's a big appetite for college football here in Cincinnati. And I love that. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Make sure you also get to the cincyhat.com. Show up to 16 lots on Monday, 5 to 8. And, uh, Ted, I appreciate the time, as always. Good luck the rest of the way. And uh, hopefully Marion handles business on Saturday. And uh, I'll uh, see you on Monday. James, thank you so much. We'll we'll check back in uh, maybe that Thursday week again and then do a little, oh. do another little show. Yeah. 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 Well, after, we after Baltimore, in. after you beat up on Lamar and company. Okay. Man, All let's, right. let's be feeling really good. Let's be feeling really good. End of November or, you know, mid November. That's, that's the I, goal here. And, uh, I don't want to roll up to your locker. Like, Hey Ted, you still want to do that video? <laughs> after oh, no. not feeling no, we're good. Gonna be good. We're going to be rolling. And then, uh, you know, we guys get all 11 guys on offense, you know, doing the right thing and everyone, Everyone, you know, loves that and is going to be ready to go when we get back. So um, exciting times ahead. Thank you so much, James.